Ladies, let's talk corsets for a moment. You know how beautiful and trim we look in them. But the best part of the day is when you take them off. Today's issue is April 6, 1895. Life and Death The shooting of Dr. J. E. Plouffe on the street in San Francisco last Saturday afternoon by J. D. L. McGaffey, a young man who was brought up in Walla Walla has been a live topic of conversation among the old residents during the week. Mr. McGaffey grew from boyhood to a man's estate in this valley, was educated in our public schools and in Whitman Academy, and was respected by his playmates and by the large number of people with whom he afterwards, in one capacity or another, came in contact. But since he left Walla Walla, J. D. L. McGaffey has encountered trouble. McGaffey, when seen, was anxious to hear whether his victim was dead or alive. He expressed himself as satisfied that he would never be convicted, as he acted in self-defense. I do not know Dr. Ploof personally in Seattle, said he, but from my position as deputy county clerk, I know considerable of him. He was arrested for malpractice, and as clerk of the court, I had the filing of the papers in the suit. Dr. Ploof, I suppose, knew that I was clerk of the court, and that I was in possession of many facts. The charge preferred against me, and Wilson by Ploof, of attempting by verbal threats to extort money from the husbands of lady correspondents is utterly false. I never went through his waste paper basket and pasted pieces of letters together, nor did I ever upon his private letters. It is part of his persecution to drive me out of the city. I am a married man. My wife is a daughter of a United States Commissioner in Seattle. It is not true that I was an embezzler while deputy county clerk there. That was proved to be a mistake. Local Notes J.F. McLean is improving his home on Park Street by the addition of porches, etc. King's Daughter's Sale, April 13th, hand-decorated Easter eggs at King's Daughter's Sale. On Wednesday evening, Rev. F. M. Fancher of the South M.E. Church of the City received a package from Weston, Oregon, labeled, From the Ladies of Your Former Congregation. Upon opening the parcel, he discovered an elegantly embroidered crazy quilt. A reporter for the Gazette happened to be standing near and hearing the ecstatic exclamations of the reverend, stepped to the side to learn the cause of his joy. The fine piece of goods, which was unfolded as I stood out, as smooth as new silk garment from the flowery kingdom, contained the monograms of those who had contributed to the blocks to it, all wrought in artistic needlework. Thoroughly disgusted. Is that suit worn out again? Tommy, you get two suits to Jim's smart one, but look like Sam Hill all the time. What's the reason? Jim Smart's pa has been there and now buys cast iron combination suits, Blackman Brothers and Co. A Whitman College botany student who has been out on a field expedition reports that the following plants are blooming. Buttercups, bluebells, 
yellow bells, bill birds, grass flowers, yellow stars, white stars, chickweed, and Dutchman britches. Walla Walla needs a good public library. Now is the time to take hold of the matter and work it up. There is already a good start in money and books. Who will take the initiative to bring the project to successful issue? Our Native Birds, Editor Gazette. So, you want to know something about our native birds? That is well. I believe the study of ornithology to be the most interesting branch of natural history. Birds, birds, you're beautiful things, with your earth-treading feet and your cloud-cleaving wings. Where shall men wander, and where shall he dwell? Beautiful birds, that ye come not as well. Our state is inhabited or visited annually by more than 275 varieties of birds. Of these, probably 125 are found in or near the Walla Walla Valley. At present, I shall attempt to describe only a few of the more common species that have come under my own observation. The meadowlark is probably the best known of our native birds. Its color is a mixture of gray and brown in regular stripes on the back, while the throat is a bright yellow with a large black heart-shaped spot resembling a cravat. As soon as the sun begins to warm the fields, the lark sings merry whistling notes with which every schoolboy is familiar. Robin the robin is also a very common bird and too well known to need describing. These birds are very fond of fruit and are usually considered a pest by fruit raisers. They also seem to relish an animal diet, providing it is the shape of bugs and worms. This I believe to be a redeeming trait. Woodpecker. The flicker is another well-known bird. It is also known by the name Golden Winged Woodpecker, Yellow Hammer, Pigeon Woodpecker, High Holder, Wake Up, and others. In short, almost every country boy has a name for it. Oriole. One of the finest plumaged birds that visit our valley is the Oriole. The species we have here is known as the Bullock's Oriole and takes the place in the west of the Baltimore Oriole in the east. Like all birds of this family, he builds a hanging nest, a neat little basket woven from hairs and threads. Turtle Dove, the Morning Dove, also known as the Carblina Dove or Turtle Dove, is a numerous summer visitant of this country. <coughs> Listen, my son, to the dove's sad tone, far and low, sweet voice like the widow's moan, is slowing out from her gentle breast, constant and pure by that lonely nest, as the wave is poured from some crystal urn, for her distant dear one's quick return. Ever, my son, be thou like the dove, in friendship as faithful, as constant in love. There is also a winter visitor that deserves our notice, the waxwing. What a pity, for finery is apt to lead its owner into trouble. Yes, I may as well be plain. Many an avian songster has been slain for his apparel. And after these gay colors have been stripped from their fortunate owner, who wears them? But I have not intended to expose wanton cruelty, and no doubt you have already considered these phases of the subject. Built Not Upon Sand, the Tacoma Morning Union publishes the following. Editor E. V. Smalley relates an incident of his late visit to Walla Walla. Banker Levi Ankeny drove him out to the Second Advent Colony, a beautiful spot about three miles from Walla Walla, where there have been built 100 or more neat cottages, 
surrounding a large, handsome, substantial college building. These villagers are watching for Christ's second coming, though it does not appear that they have fixed the date of the appearance. Mr. Ankeny, who is one of the trustees of the college, curiously asked one of the leading men the necessity of building a schoolhouse so substantial that it might last a hundred years, when his associates looked for the early end of sublimary things. Oh, responded the Adventist, it is the foolish men, the scripture tell us, who built their houses on sand. Mr. Smalley looks upon Walla Walla as a city unique in several respects. Napier Breezes Farmers have been mucking with the face of Mother Earth until it looks like a crazy quilt. Our friend C. Miller was the victim of the champion joke of the day. His wife presented him with an eight and a half pound girl. Dr. Blaylock officiated. Mother and child are doing well, but Chris says, ah, it's a girl. Smith Springings. This community is beginning to think that the wisdom of school boards and of school teachers is past finding out. After a protracted parting of nearly two years, the board here became united, ready for action, and chuck full of business. First, they hired a Columbia teacher, but it was found that this individual had no certificate. Then another call was made, and another Columbia teacher was hired and only taught one week when it was discovered that her certificate had expired. Now that district dads are waiting to import either from Walla Walla County or from Columbia County. Hopefully we will find the right teacher. <laughs>